Mr. Lewis. Question 11. Mr. Speaker, sir, based on the available loan records from the Moneylenders Credit Bureau, which was set up in 2016, the median number of years between the foreign domestic workers' first arrival in Singapore to the time they took their first loan in 2016 is eight years. Eight years, huh? And for those who took up their first loan in 2017 and 2018, it's seven years and six years, respectively. It really means that majority of the FTW borrowers have worked in Singapore for some time. The Ministry of Manpower, MOM, and the Ministry of Law, Min Law, have studied the reasons for the surge in foreign domestic workers borrowing in recent years. There are a few. It's a combination of supply and demand side factors. So first, it was observed that some licensed money lenders, LML, have been targeting the FTWs through short front advertisements and readily extending loans to them. Second, some FDWs have been recommending loans to their fellow FDWs by word of mouth, by WhatsApp, by Facebook. Third, there are some FDWs acting as guarantors for fellow FDWs to obtain loans. So to curb the rise in borrowing by work pass holders, MOM and MinLaw had announced in October 2018 the introduction of aggregate loan caps the self-exclusion framework and administrative penalties on work pass holders who borrow from unlicensed money lenders. In, twen in 2019, this year, July, just about two months ago, Min Law announced further measures to stem the increase in money lending activities targeting foreigners earning less than $10,000 per annum. The the aggregate loan caps for foreigners earning less than $10,000 per annum was reduced and limits were placed on the supply of loans to foreigners. Licensed money lenders are also prohibited from displaying advertisements targeted at FDWs and from accepting foreigners as loan guarantors. MOM and MinLaw are continuing to monitor the situation very closely and we are working closely with employers, NGOs and the employment agencies to educate FTWs on prudent financial management and the risk and implications of borrowing money. Mr. Louisa. I, I thank SPS for the reply, but could I ask not the top three reasons, not how they are borrowing, but the top three reasons of why they are borrowing. I think there are some reports that say that they are borrowing because of family emergencies. So I'm just wondering how effective our new measures will be if uh, it is for family emergencies and we block them from licensed money lenders, will we not then push them to the unlicensed money lenders that will make it put them in a more difficult position, the FDW and the employers as well. And that's why I think if we can study what the, the reasons of why they're borrowing, I think then we can address the root of the problem and then come up with policies to, to address it. Mr. Speaker, so I want to thank the member, Mr. Louis Ng, for his supplementary questions. And um, maybe at this juncture, let me share some numbers, right? And these were the numbers that um, we have been monitoring the numbers since we rolled out the measures announced in October 2018. And based on the data from Moneylenders Credit Bureau from March 2016 and June 2019, the number of FTWs who took loans from licensed moneylenders for the year 2016 was 1,500. For year 2017, it was 12,000. And for the year 2018, it's 42,000. And just first half of this year, is 39,000. So the spike has been from 2017 to the first half of this year, which really warrant the two rounds of measures. You are right. We do, the fact that the licensed money lenders are still allowed to lend money, which, which to us, we want to make sure there's an option, especially for FTWs who have genuine need. And we did the study on not just the supply side consideration, but also on the <coughs> demand side. Yes, there are FTW who will need to plan their finances, maybe, maybe also get an advance from their employers because they would need to send money back for their children's education or for urgent medical bills, or their family will need them to send money back to renovate or to build houses, etc. 
And we think if you look at the numbers that the line, if you think about the numbers that I talked about, actually in year 2016, it was quite stable at 1,500. Okay, but it spiked seven times to 12,000 in 2017 and then 2018. So we looked at it and the two ministries studied and we think that increased financial hardship does not seem to be, does not appear to be a reason for the surge in the FTW borrowing. But we want to make sure that for those who have genuine needs, they can still do so. And we encourage our, we encourage our FTW to maintain open communications with their employers to talk about their financial needs and also to plan their finances for rainy day. And in terms of the, the measures we highlighted in July, uh, we have reduced the aggregate loan cap from 1,500 to uh, 500 and we've also limited the number of foreigners that the foreign, the licensed money lenders can lend to in their loan book, etc. And we will continue to monitor the situation. And FTWs who also need help other than speaking to their employers, we encourage them to also come forward to, uh, to MOM and also the NGO, including Centre for Domestic Employees or even the Foreign Domestic Worker Association. Now to go back to Mr. Lewis Ng's point about the demand side, uh, I talk about some of the genuine needs but in our study, as we understand some of the supply side trigger, we also learned that because the FTW are recommending their fellow FTW to get loans, and even going to the extent of being a guarantor for them to get a loan. And when we did a survey amongst the FTW who were standing there queuing up to borrow money, some of them did share that they are borrowing money to buy clothes, to buy mobile phones, to buy handbags. So I think it's a combination of needs and wants. Yeah.